Hello everyone good morning and how are you all welcome back to medical pharma lecture once again so i hope you are fit and fine and you are taking care of yourself and maintaining the safe distance right in this covid-19 pandemic okay so myself sunil kumar shah and and today i am going to discuss about uh, limit test for heavy metal which is a, again a small topic from uh, pharmaceutical inorganic chemistry okay so this lecture is particularly for uh, b pharmacy for some a student and uh, d pharm also and uh, it is also useful for those students whose syllabus include this topic okay so please be with me till end okay so shall we start yeah let's begin so guys can you guess which type of impurity is heavy metal yeah most of you might have thought it is a cumulative impurity which is absolutely perfectly right okay so it is a cumulative impurity and do you know it may not cause immediate adverse effect but when taken for long period of time it will accumulate in our body and then it will show toxicity right so can you give some example yeah okay so examples are like copper nickel cobalt mercury etc okay so if this impurity is present in our pharmaceutical preparation or excipients what type of problem it is going to cause okay so it is going to cause lots of problem okay so we'll see few of them like it can decrease therapeutic value of drug so it will decrease the therapeutic value of drug secondly it uh, can arise or create technical problems during drug formulation so whenever we are formulating any drug during that time it will interact with excipient or drug itself and create problems okay and thirdly okay this is a sign can you guess what it is okay so it will cause toxicity on prolonged consumptions okay so whenever you are taking for longer duration then it will cause toxicity right so because of this various problems we try to exclude this heavy metal impurity in our pharmaceutical preparation or ingredients okay but practically it is difficult to exclude them so what to do so various pharmacopoeia or monographs they have given a permissible limit beyond that if this impurity is there then we are going to exclude them okay but if these impurities are within that permissible limit then we are going to accept them okay so how to know whether these heavy metal impurities are within the permissible limit or beyond the permissible limit to know that we have to carry out limit test is that okay so hope you have understood now we'll define the limit test for heavy metal okay so how we can define so limit test for heavy metal is defined as qualitative and semi quantitative test designed to detect the limit of heavy metal impurity in pharmaceutical preparations as specified in pharmacopoeia okay so now we'll try to understand the principle behind limit test for heavy metal okay so for that we are going to take two nessler cylinder okay one we are going to mark as a sample nessler cylinder and another we are going to mark as yes a standard nessler cylinder right okay so to the sample nessler cylinder we are going to add sample solution okay and to the same nessler cylinder we are also going to add hydrogen sulfide or sodium sulfide okay then coming to the standard nessler cylinder we are going to add a standard lead nitrate solution after that we are also going to add hydrogen sulfide or sodium sulfide to the standard nessler cylinder okay after that we are going to adjust ph between 3 to 4 uh, with acetic acid and ammonia for both the sample solution as well as for a standard solution okay now focus on sample nessler cylinder so here if heavy metals is present in the sample it will react with hydrogen sulfide or sodium sulfide to produce heavy metal sulfide in presence of acetic acid and ammonia okay and this heavy metal sulfide will produce black brown ppt that is called as sample color right now coming to a standard nessler cylinder so as you know that this lead nitrate contain lead that is plumbus it will react with hydrogen sulfide and sodium sulfide same as sample cylinder and it will produce lead sulfide in presence of acetic acid and ammonia okay and this lead sulfide will produce black color ppt and that is called as a standard color okay and thus produce sample color and a standard color are compared so whatever we have understood till now that is the principle behind limit test for heavy metal but how to write in exam okay so we can write like that the principle behind 
limit test for heavy metal is based upon the reaction between heavy metal ions and hydrogen sulfide or sodium sulfide to produce black brown color precipitate of metal sulfide at pH around 3 to 4. Okay. Thus produced sample color is compared with that of a standard color which is produced by a specific amount of lead nitrate solution okay under same reaction condition so we have written same thing whatever we have understood okay now we'll try to write reaction okay so for that first of all we'll write sample reaction so just imagine the reaction which was occurring in sample Nessler cylinder okay so we'll write same thing so here HM will react with that is heavy metal will react with hydrogen sulfide H2S to give heavy metal sulfide HMS plus hydrogen gas H2 okay and we have to maintain the pH uh, between 3 to 4 with acetic acid and ammonia okay okay so this is heavy metal this is hydrogen sulfide this is heavy metal sulfide and this one is hydrogen gas okay so don't forget to write the word name okay we have another reagent also so we will write reaction for that also that is heavy metal plus sodium sulfide it will produce HMS that is heavy metal sulfide plus 2 sodium ion and the pH would be same 3 to 4 and we have to adjust with acetic acid and ammonia okay so here also we are going to write the name in words so here it is heavy metal this is sodium sulfide this is heavy metal sulfide and this is sodium ion okay now we will write the standard reaction so here we have used lead nitrate that is PbNO32 it will react with H2S to produce PbS that is lead sulfide plus HNO3 that is nitric acid and the pH would be 3 to 4 and we are going to adjust it with acetic acid and ammonia understood right and now write the name okay this is lead nitrate this is hydrogen sulfide this is lead sulfide and this is nitric acid okay and similarly, we will write the reaction for another reason that is lead nitrate react with sodium sulfide Na2S to give lead sulfide plus NaNO3 that is sodium nitrite. Okay, and here also pH would be 3 to 4 and we are going to adjust it with acetic acid and ammonia. Understood? And we will write the name that is lead nitrate. This is sodium sulfide. Okay, this is lead sulfide and this is sodium nitrate okay now we'll see the procedure okay so here the sample is categorized into three different groups first category is those samples which will give clear colorless solution in water and the second category is those sample which will not give clear colorless solution in water and the third one category is those sample which will give clear colorless solution in sodium hydroxide NaOH okay so for the first category which will give clear colorless solution in water for them we are going to follow method A for those which will not give clear colorless solution in water we are going to follow method B and for those which will give clear colorless solution in NaOH sodium hydroxide we are going to follow method C okay now we will see method A so it is for those sample which will give clear colorless solution in water so for that we are going to take two Nessler cylinder one we will mark as a sample another we will we are going to mark as a standard Nessler cylinder and to the sample Nessler cylinder we are going to add 25 ml of sample as prescribed in Indian pharmacopoeia that is IP and to the standard we are going to add 2 ml of lead nitrate solution and we are going to dilute it with 25 ml of water okay after that we are going to adjust pH between 3 to 4 by adding acetic acid and ammonia okay in both sample Nessler cylinder as well as in a standard Nessler cylinder okay after that we are going to make up the volume up to 35 ml with distilled water in both sample Nessler cylinder as well as to a standard Nessler cylinder after that we are going to add 10 ml of freshly prepared hydrogen sulfide into sample as well as to a standard Nessler cylinder okay and then finally make up the volume up to 50 ml with distilled water and keep aside for 5 minutes okay so when we'll keep aside so what will happen heavy metal and hydrogen sulfide in sample Nessler cylinder they will react and they will produce heavy metal sulfide in presence of acetic acid and ammonia 
and this heavy metal sulfide will produce black brown precipitate that is called as sample color okay now coming to the standard national cylinder here the lead present in lead nitrate will react with hydrogen sulfide to produce lead sulfide in presence of acetic acid and ammonia and this lead sulfide will produce black color ppt which is called as a standard color and thus produce sample color and a standard color are compared by viewing against white background okay so this is the method a now coming to a method b which is also ip method and is for those sample which is not going to give clear colorless solution in water so for that we are going to follow method b okay so here what we are going to do so we'll take a crucible and in that crucible we are going to add a specific amount of sample as per ip okay and then we will moisten it with concentrated sulfuric acid that is s2so4 okay and after that we are going to ignite it until the sample become charmed completely it will burn okay into ashes after that we are going to add few drops of nitric acid and we are again going to heat it at a temperature of 500 degrees celsius okay then we will cool it okay and then whatever residue is there we are going to digest with hydrochloric acid okay and after digestion whatever excess acid is there we are going to neutralize it and we can do neutralization by adding ammonia okay after that we are going to dilute the solution with water and then we are going to filter it okay and after that whatever filtrate will be there we are going to adjust ph between 3 to 4 by acetic acid and ammonia okay and then we are going to take a national cylinder which we will mark as a sample and we are going to transfer 35 ml of sample to that national cylinder and we are going to add 10 ml of freshly prepared hydrogen sulfide okay and we are going to make up the volume up to 50 ml uh, with distilled water and we are going to keep aside for 5 minutes okay and black ppt will be produced okay that is our sample color okay and the standard solution is prepared same as method a okay now coming to method c uh, which is for those sample which will produce clear colorless solution in sodium hydroxide okay so for that we are going to take two nestler cylinder one will mark as a sample nestler cylinder and another we will mark as a standard nestler cylinder okay so to the sample nestler cylinder we are going to add 25 ml of sample solution as prescribed in ip okay and to the standard nestler cylinder we are going to add 2 ml of lead nitrate solution and we are going to dilute it with 25 ml of distilled water okay then we are going to add 5 ml of dilute sodium hydroxide that is NaOH okay to the sample solution as well as to the standard solution okay then we are going to add 5 drops of sodium sulfide okay into sample as well as to standard okay then we are going to make up the volume up to 50 ml with distilled water for both the Nestler cylinders okay and then we are going to keep aside for five minutes okay so during that the heavy metal present in sample will react with sodium sulfide to produce heavy metal sulfide okay and this heavy metal sulfide will produce black brown precipitate which is sample color okay now coming to the standard national cylinder where lead will react with sodium sulfide to produce lead sulfide and this lead sulfide will produce black color ppt that is called a standard color and now the sample and a standard color thus produced are compared by viewing against white background okay now uh, coming to the notes so first note is use of acetic acid and ammonia in limit test for heavy metal so why we do we already know so dilute acetic acid and ammonia is used to adjust ph of the solution between 3 to 4 because precipitate of heavy metal sulfide are stable in in this pH range okay now coming to the second note that is use of freshly prepared hydrogen sulfide in limit test for heavy metal so why we use freshly prepared hydrogen sulfide the reason is that hydrogen sulfide starts escaping upon a storage and hence if it is used it will not give accurate results that's why we prepare we use freshly prepared hydrogen sulfide okay and uh, last is why heating of sample with various acids 
is performed in method B of limit test for heavy metal. Why we are doing that? So the heating the sample with various acid is performed in method B to remove non-metallic substances which will interfere in the limit test for heavy metals. So how they will interfere? By producing color. So we are heating them with various reagents so that we can destroy this color producing components. Okay. Now we'll come to comparison. Okay. So the color produced by sample as well as a standard are compared by viewing against white background. And now coming to results, if the sample color is less than that of a standard color, okay, then sample will pass the limit test for heavy metal. Okay. And if the sample color is more than is more than that of a standard color, then the sample will fail the limit test for heavy metal. So always remember the sample color should be always less than a standard for passing the limit test for heavy metal. Now we will see some important question. So here the question are generally direct. Okay. And they will come like write the principle involved in limit test for heavy metal or write in brief about limit test for heavy metals. Okay for 5 marks or it can come for long essay type also write in detail about principle involved in limit test for heavy metal and write the reaction and procedure involved in limit test for heavy metal okay and sometimes they may ask for a small question like why acetic acid and ammonia is used in limit test for heavy metal okay now it's time for answer tips so the answer tip will be like you have to give uh, what it is called title or suitable title whenever you are writing any answer and secondly whatever you are writing you separate it like introduction section will be different definitions separate example separate okay and thirdly you have to write your answer as specific and you should present it nicely but don't make fanciful and please see my notes okay how I have written same way you have to write okay a PDF note will be there and how you can download okay so there is two method as I told you in the previous lecture uh, one is uh, you can directly go to our Facebook group and download okay link is given in the description section or you can send me uh, your email ID and the subject name in my Instagram and the link is given in description section and I will add you in the mailing list and uh, whenever I will post any video related to that particular subject you will receive the note via email okay so this is all about uh, limit test for heavy metal with this we came to the end and uh, please subscribe my channel and how you feel about this video please mention this in the comment section and uh, if you have enjoyed this lecture please give me a thumbs up and subscribe my channel thank you thank you very much